In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name because we are gathered together so that your anointing can come upon your people. We pray, Lord, that you put and pour your anointing down tonight in a mighty way in Jesus' name. We're praying that every leader here, every worker here, every servant of God here, brother, sister, we pray, oh Lord, that your anointing will come mightily upon everyone in Jesus' name. That power of the Holy Ghost will be ours. The gift will be ours. And the exploits will be ours. And Lord, we pray that your work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Be glorified tonight, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. Tonight, as we come to have uh, this uh, beautiful, wonderful night, we're considering an important part in our series on leadership. The leadership needs anointing. We need the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Already, you know, I've been talking to you on leadership. And I told you that we're using each of the letters of the word leadership so we can have the outpouring of the power and the wisdom and the goodness of God upon our lives. L for love, love in Christ-like leadership. E for effectiveness, effectiveness of competent leadership. And A for anointing, anointing for consecrated leaders. D for discipline, the discipline of crucified leaders. E for exploits, exploits of charismatic leaders. And R for resourcefulness, resourcefulness of creative leaders. S for science, science and wonders, supernatural science. Science for commissioned leaders. H for holiness, holiness in Christian leaders. And uh, I for intercession, intercession by compassionate leaders and P for progress, progress through courageous leadership. And tonight we come to number three in our series, which is anointing for consecrated leaders. Anointing refers to the abiding gift, the abiding power, the abiding operation, and the active manifestation of the Holy Spirit on the appointed consecrated leader, especially in the New Testament. Yes, it was in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament as well we see the fullness of the anointing. And then we also see the power coming upon anointed, consecrated people of God. In days like ours, when false prophets are multiplying, and people with false signs and false gifts are parading every street and every corner of the city. We need people like Elijah. You know, Elijah came up in the days of Ahab and Jezebel. And with many prophets of Baal in the land, only one man, Elijah, with anointing turned the tide of evil. That's why the Lord wants to pour his anointing upon the people of God today. So that all the evil... All the falsehood and all the deception around, just one Elijah in that country, just one Elijah in that community will be able to turn the tide of evil around. And you remember Moses with the anointing, and he could overthrow and overpower Pharaoh and the magicians and the idolatry of Egypt. And only Joshua, not Caleb, not Caleb, Joshua with anointing. Because the impartation of anointing had been put on Joshua, but not on Caleb. And this tells us something. Caleb was a great man. Caleb was a good man. And Caleb was a, trust, a trustworthy man. Caleb was a dependable man. But the anointing was not transferred to him. And it was the one that had the anointing. You might say that, G, that Joshua was a colleague to Caleb. And you might say that all the good qualities in Joshua, Caleb also had. Only one thing that was missing. That's the anointing. I know, yes, was one of the 70 elders and the spirit came upon him with the other, other 69. But Joshua had a transfer, an impartation of the anointing upon him, that great man of God, a great, a great leader, Moses. And because of that, he was able to settle Israel in the land of Canaan. In our day as well, we need the anointing. And the anointing we need is going to be given unto us in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And I'm reading to you from verse 21. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ. And has anointed us is God. Here Paul the apostle talking to the Corinthian believers. And you know the Corinthian believers they came behind in no gift at all. They are the gift of the spirit. The power of the spirit. The anointing of the spirit. And here Paul the apostle writing to them. In his second epistle he said. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ. And has anointed us. 
referring to himself and the Corinthian believers is God who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts that word earnest there means the pledge it means the seal it means a guarantee and it says the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit it's a guarantee telling us you can go into the ministry now and you'll succeed and it's a seal of the appointment he has given us and as you have got the seal upon you and the mark upon you the holy ghost and the gifts and the anointing you can go and face any battle and face anything in life and you'll be able to overcome and we're going with that seal of the spirit we're going with that guarantee of the spirit we're going with that assurance of the spirit the anointing of the spirit will be upon you mightily tonight in jesus name can I tell you one man that had this anointing and he had supernatural power upon him and his supernatural power worked in such a way that even kings trembled when they listened to him like Herod trembled when he heard him I'm talking about John the Baptist in Luke chapter 1 reading from verse 13 Luke chapter 1 reading from verse 13 but the angel of the Lord said unto him fear not Zechari Zacharias for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. When God gives you a name, and God knows your name, and God puts your name down, and God does not put, you know, the name of such people like this among the names of every deacon Harry. In fact, not even among the names of all the other believers. There's a special place for them in the kingdom there's a special place for them in the service of the lord and the angel came and mentioned his name and said his name will be john can i just uh, tell you as, as you think about the people that god named before they were born all those people in the bible that god named them before they were born and he knew their name and he appointed them he gave them the anointing and the power he selected them he appointed them he anointed them for a special ministry and when God, special, when God puts your name as special and says your name aside and he says, I know you and I've called you and I've converted you and I've saved you and I've sanctified you and I've called you into service, I've appointed you and anointed you and then he puts you in a special place, in his book, in his mind, in his kingdom, then the anointing is going to be very mighty and powerful in your life. He mentioned his name, he said it will be John. And then we are told, as he goes on in verse 14, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And as the anointing will have come for tonight, that the Lord will fill us with the Holy Ghost. It will empower our lives. It will envelope us with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost night demands great, great amen. amen. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and in the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and it is obedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. To make ready a people prepared for for the Lord. Then you see as we're looking at this word of God that the anointing, the anointing actually is associated with the Holy Ghost. You, you would have seen in some of the passages I read to you like Second Corinthians chapter 1 which we have read already the, uh, the, the interchanging of those uh, concepts, the anointing and then the Holy Ghost. And you find this in the life and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. I'm reading to you from verse 38. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power anointing you see there anointed Jesus of Nazareth and then it says with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and you will see there the importance of the anointing, the importance of the power, and the importance of the presence of God, and the preeminence of God in your life, when he fills you with the Holy Ghost, and he anoints you with the Holy Ghost. Anointing for consecrated leaders. This tells us something. If the Lord is going to put the anointing upon us, we must be consecrated leaders. 
committed leaders. We must be uh, leaders that put every sin on the altar. I want to serve you. And I want you to think about the people you know have been anointed in the scriptures. A man like Moses, didn't he put everything on the altar? He was a consecrated leader. And a man like Joshua, didn't he put everything on the altar? A consecrated leader. And a man like Elijah, didn't he put everything on the altar? A consecrated leader. A man like Elijah. The moment the mantle of Elijah came upon him, he was walking. He was on his normal work. And then he told Elijah, Elijah, immediately let me go home to the people at home and tell them, I'm now, I, I, I'm leaving this thing for good forever. And I'm going to follow you. And Elijah said, what have I done? You go back again. And then he went home, settled everything in one day. And he came back pouring water on the hands of Elijah, a consecrated man. And you think about David, a man that put his life in his own hand. And he said, thy servant was watching over the sheep of the, of the father on the field. And then Elijah came and took one of the lads and I caught him and I smote him and I killed him and a bear came and then took one of the lads and I caught him again and killed him and these Philistines that you people are afraid of it's like the uncircumcised the Philistine uncircumcised Gentile I'll take him on I'll destroy him I'm going to put my life in my hand I will do it the power of God came upon that man because he was a consecrated leader and you're thinking about Daniel that was a consecrated leader you're thinking about Joseph and Pharaoh said, we see that the spirit of the Lord is supposed the spirit of wisdom. And you are the one to be in charge of uh, taking care of the time of the famine. These men that had the Holy Ghost upon them, anointing and power, they were consecrated men. You come to the New Testament, you are thinking about John the Baptist. Or you are thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ, I come to do thy will, O God. In the volume of the books is written concerning me, and here I come, I must do your will. And Paul, the apostle, the things that were given to me, I count as nothing. In fact, I count everything as draws because I want to win Christ. The people that had the anointing in Bible days, I mean real anointing, I mean powerful anointing, I mean dynamic anointing, I mean miracle working anointing, signs and wonders power upon their lives, they were consecrated men. And as we're talking about the anointing today, we're not talking about something cheap that God is giving to the people that are not serious with God, not consecrated to God, not laying things on the altar, anointing for consecrated leaders, whether they are men or women, you'll see that the people that the Lord poured the anointing upon, they were consecrated people. You're thinking of people a, a, few, a few years ago, Charles G. Finney, that was a consecrated man. And you're thinking about uh, people like, um, the, uh, like uh, this uh, man, uh, the, the name is uh, John Chile. At this John Chile, great, great things happen. And if you have not got the books of John Chile, you need to get them and see the mighty, mighty things that happen. But we're talking about consecrated people. That man had a great, great business with thousands of, with hundreds of thousands of naira that he was worth. And then the Lord spoke to him. Then he took care of everything. He dispersed all the, disputed all the money to the people around. And he said bye bye to business forever. And then he saw the face of the Lord, the power of the Lord came upon him. The Lord sent him to South Africa. And when he was going to South Africa, he didn't have enough money that, that would even that would even pay at the at the point of immigration. But he said the Lord had called him. He laid everything upon the altar. I said, Lord, there's no money and there's no friend, and he didn't have any contact even in South Africa. And then what happened is he got into sheep. And then he got into the border. And then he got to the place where they lined up. And where they lined up, they were to pay an amount of money. And he didn't have the money, but it was on the line. That was a consecrated man. And the anointing of God was upon his life. You are talking about leaders that had anointing, that had power, that had insight and revelation. John Chile was such a man. While he was standing on the queue there, somebody came to him and said, Are you a missionary from America? He said, Yes. How many children do you have? He said, This is the number of children. Where are the children? They are here. He said, The Lord told me just last night to come and pay the money here and give him the money that he'll pay right there before it came to his turn and that's why he paid the money but no house and then as he came out he went from the immigration then somebody came i said are you the mission from uh, from uh, that other place he said yes the lord sent me that i should give you a house and he had total complete accommodation for everybody in the family and then the lord began to do great great things within about a few years there were about one hundred thousand people that received supernatural miracles and it, when people have that kind of anointing that is great anointing and the woman Woodward Ether I don't know whether you have the book of Woodward Ether signs by Woodward Ether the great things that happen 
that woman, just a woman, but the power of the Lord upon her life, the anointing came like this in a very tangible way. And everywhere he went, talk about healing, talk about deliverance, and talk about revelations. And there were some people that were come, they wanted to disturb her, disturb her ministry, because they said, what kind of woman is this? Because in their own time, women were not preaching, and women were not evangelizing. But the anointing of God came upon what was ever. And because of that anointing, she started preaching. And then there were people, young boys, that said, we're going to run that woman out of the city, out of the town. And while they were coming, before they got to her, the power of God will come upon them, they will fall on the ground, and they will begin to confess their sins. And some of them that wanted to harm her, when they fall down like that, they are totally paralyzed, until she will come and pray for them and raise them up. By the time they got up, they were converted already. Great, mighty things happened. Through those people that were anointed. And that's why we came together here tonight. We came for the anointing. I said we came for the anointing. And that anointing will come upon your life. In Jesus name. We're going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the promise of the Spirit's anointing for Christian leaders. The promise of the Spirit's anointing for Christian leaders. Number two, the power through the Spirit's anointing on Christian leaders. The power through the Spirit's anointing on Christian leaders. Number three, praying through to the Spirit's anointing on Christian leaders. I come to number one, the promise. The promise of the Spirit's anointing. Actually, from the Old Testament, the Lord had been looking forward to the time when He will pour His Spirit upon all flesh. And when the anointing will come upon the people of God in a mighty way. In Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. And I'm reading there from verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon dry ground. I will pour my Spirit upon the seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. You will see what the Lord is saying here, and I, but I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. You wonder why many people do not have the anointing today? Because of no thirst. Because of no thirst. And because of no hunger. I remember in my personal life, many, many years ago, I got saved. And then it didn't take too many years. I got sanctified. And then I got loving. I, I loved holiness. I loved purity of heart and sanctification. And I read everything I could read about sanctification. And then it came to the baptism in the Holy Ghost and power. And there were many people that they weren't so much a giving to reading the Bible. They weren't so much giving to, you know, the things of the Lord. And then they would tell me, they said this how to get it. And then they'll kneel down. And then they'll demonstrate. And he'll say some blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, that's not the kind I want. I want another thing. I want the kind of, the, the kind of anointing power that came upon the apostles. They said, but you know, it, it, it's taking you some time. I said, yes, it's taking time. When you plant maize, it may take about six days, a few weeks, and it grows. When you plant cocoa, it's a different thing. And when you plant something like palm tree, that's a different thing. It's going to take longer. I said, my own is taking long because I know I'm going to use it for something great. I don't want the one that will just come up now and then blah 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 and then that is over and I cannot see the result of that I, I, and I went seeking the face of seeking the face of the Lord and I laid everything upon the altar and I read everything I could read about Finney, about uh, T.L. Osborne, about John Wesley, about Charles Giffney, about all these other people. I read and read the power of revival and uh, why revival tarries uh, by that other man. I read everything and then as I read I'll see another thing. I said Lord maybe it's because of this I laid on the altar again. Maybe it's because of this I laid on the altar again. And then after some time, a very simple now. I just get on my knees and the Lord said, if you've been able not to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give the Holy Ghost to them that asked him? And then I raised my hand to heaven and began to praise the Lord and the power came. All of a sudden, everything changed. My communication changed. My preaching changed. Because we even started deeper life at that time. We started deeper life in 1973. And then it was this 1974, October 20, 23rd, that the power came upon me. And immediately, my communication and my approach and the feeling that I used to have and the way of, the, the way of giving out the word of God, everything totally changed. And then I wasn't satisfied. I so said, yes, thank you, Lord, because now the power has come. But I want more. I, and I went back to the Bible. I left all the other books and everything. I said, that's okay now. Enough with, enough with Finney and enough with uh, Wesley. Enough with all these other people. I went to the Bible and I said, I want this time. 
I want these gifts. All these gifts of the Spirit, I want in my life. And I began to thirst. And I began to hunger. And I began to pursue. And I began to have passion. It is that passion. It is that zeal. It is that looking for something that you said, I thank God for what I've got, but I've not got enough yet. That's what led me eventually into all these other things that God has been doing now. And it is now your turn. I said it is now your turn. The power of God will come upon you in Jesus' name. But you know, it will take thirsting. It will take real thirsting. I, I remember, you know, the people that thirsted in those days. And I, we, we went to different kinds of meetings all over this Nigeria, not only because of deeper life, because of uh, other people too. That is, they invited me. And I remember we were having a, normally when we finish a meeting like this, you know, at that time, why the power came upon us, those of us, uh, you know, of that uh, generation, why the power came upon us, because of the thirst. And because of the hunger, uh, we'll have a program like this. And then we'll finish normally around 9 o'clock or 9.30. Then we'll go for a meal. Then we'll make announcement. We'll say for those who want to go further in the Lord, we're going to have a period of digging deep. That one doesn't have any time. And if you will ask some of the people that still remain in ministry, among our colleagues at that time, young young people at that time, I don't want to mention their names. Some of them, you might know them because some of them are still uh, ministering here and there. And when uh, they meet me nowadays, we see them sometimes when we have time. And we we'll begin to discuss when we met in Omar here and then we are digging deep all through the night it will start about at 10 o'clock after we have finished our supper and then we say those who want to go further in the Lord and those who are searching for something and you want the anointing of God upon you come for digging deep and we'll be there and you're talking about digging to the word of God having the power of God that was the time we we're consecrating that was the time we we're saying oh Lord make use of us let me be another Elijah today let me be another Paul today and we'll go until about five o'clock in the morning and then we'll just go and sleep a little and then have our breakfast and then we we'll come eight o'clock eight thirty we'll have started the morning session again and then we we'll finish the following day about nine o'clock nine thirty and then ten o'clock we we'll come back for digging deep again and we dug deep into the word of God. I remember when in Nugum and in one of those digging deep sessions here was this a totally literate and we have finished that normal meeting we we'll see the boys and uh, the boys and girls that is uh, those in secondary school and uh, they can they can go back and sleep and then the rest of all sometimes they called us pilgrims and sometimes they called us the senior members of you know that Christian organization I'm talking to of church now, Christian organization, and then in Enugu, who are there, who are all gathered together, and here was this illiterate, complete illiterate, and we finished, I think, those who were giving the digging deep exhortation, they finished about one o'clock or one thirty in the night, and then they left us, and we began to pray, we began to pray, and then this woman just continued to pray, and she was praying in the normal language, Igbo language, because, uh, you know, she uh, she's uh, from the east. All of a sudden, this woman couldn't speak any English, even the pidgin English that people spoke, at that time in that area she barely understood and she was total complete uh, easterner without uh, having all the advantage of school and then before about three o'clock in the morning or so this man this man broke forth into beautiful english language and she spoke and spoke and spoke and all of us that were digging deep and were saying oh god give it to us also give it to us also and between three o'clock and five o'clock in the morning the woman was still speaking wonderful english correct grammatical english beautiful thing and the message she was giving out it was great and that was what the lord did for us at that time and that's what the lord is promising today that for the people that are thirsty for the people that are yearning for the people that are saying oh lord this is my time I want something. I want something. If you are there tonight, the Lord is going to do it in Jesus' name. Uh, but you know, if you come for the conference and it's just like, you know, you're at the conference, there's no thirst and there's no hunger. And when we begin to pray, you just pray like you used to pray. Oh, God bless me. Make me this. And after you've said a few sentences, you don't know what to say again. But if the power of the Lord will come upon you tonight and transform your prayer life and dig deep into your very heart, that everything that is in your heart, that is hindering the overflowing of the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life, the Lord will dig everything out and the Lord will remove everything out of your life and it's going to be so tonight 
I said it's going to be so tonight. In Ezekiel chapter 37, Ezekiel chapter 37, God was talking to Ezekiel and was talking about the dry bones. He was talking about the people of Israel actually. And he wanted to do something among the children of Israel. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of dry bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, they were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Tonight, can these bones live? In our churches, can these bones live? When the Holy Ghost comes now upon us, when the power from the highest comes upon us, and when the people of God and the leaders in the church, when we're anointed afresh, all the dry bones in our localities, they will live. I said they will leave. All the people that have been coming to church and they have not been converted, they will come under conviction and the power of the Lord will arrest them in Jesus' name. When you become another man, your church will become another church and then the people will become other people with the power of God supernatural upon their lives. Can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord, that, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, prophesy, proclaim and preach. And declare my word unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Anybody can say that, but nothing will happen if there's no anointing. Anybody can say that, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. How many people in this land, how many people in this church are telling people every time in the bus on the street, hear the word of the Lord? What is happening? After I say, hear the word of the Lord. And the people who are sick, and the people who are demon possessed, and will say, hear the word of the Lord. What's happening after that? If there is no anointing, if there is no power, if there is no unction, and if there is no dynamite within us, when we say, hear the word of the Lord, nothing will happen. Again, it's said unto me, prophesy to these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Everywhere we go after the anointing has come upon us, the dead bones shall live. The dead bones shall rise. And those who are dead in sins and trespasses, they shall rise in Jesus' name. And I will, I will lay sinners upon you. I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord so I prophesied as I was commanded and I, as I prophesied there was a noise and behold the shaking and the bones came together and bone to his bone and when I beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, come forth, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this lane that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they lived, and they lived. They are going to live. And they stood up upon their feet, exceeding great army. That man had anointing, and you will have the anointing. I said that Ezekiel had anointing at the power of God. That same power will come upon you in Jesus' name. Because we're told in chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles, verse 39, for the promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. And to your children. And to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Even tonight for me the promise is unto me. Greater anointing. A multiplied anointing. I said it's also for you. The promise is unto you. I said the promise is unto you. And you will have this anointing tonight in Jesus' name. Point number two is the power through the Spirit's anointing upon Christian leaders, consecrated leaders. The power that comes through the Spirit's anointing upon Christian leaders, consecrated leaders. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. We're looking at verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. Ye shall receive power. You receive power. I said you will receive power. 
I remember when this power came many many years ago it's in the 70s I'm talking about now and many of us will not even know all these things I'm talking about and uh, you know the power came and when the power came and the power worked in different different ways and sometimes uh, you know uh, the power will just wake me up in the night and give me a song and then I'll, I'll put my tape recorder on and begin just to sing it peace purity power mine in the Lord mine in the Lord the Lord gave that to me I just recorded it and many other songs the Lord gave me and then went to write free free indeed uh, that track I just you know the, the power came it, it comes you know it's there all the time because I will give you the Holy Ghost and it will abide with you forever but there's some spots and there's some moments in my life when that power will just descend like this and then if it's a power to write I begin to write if it's a power to sing I begin to sing if it's a power to pray I begin to pray if it's a power of revelation at that time revelation comes I begin to pen everything down if it's a power for strategy and the Lord begins to just blow it on me and channel it to me and I begin to write everything down and that, that, that track free and free indeed it just came all of a sudden and then I just began to write and as, as I was writing it's not like you know you're writing you're looking for dictionary you're writing you're looking for concordance you're writing you're looking for something you know it, you, it just comes and then you're writing writing and writing and then as I wrote that and, and when it finished it finished it, it just it just sees and you just know that now uh, the thing is gone up and then after that I took it uh, to the people that were printing for us at that time and then that track when it came out free and free indeed there was a woman that uh, she was in a particular denominational church that I was attending at, at that time and then uh, you know that woman saw the track and it described her life and then she saw me at the car park of that church and said please come uh, are you the one that God used to write this I said yes I said this description of my life my my husband is working at the airways and I cannot even enjoy the free ticket I have four free tickets every year to travel anywhere I want because of the position of my husband in, a, in his place of work but can never I can never go out there's a driver to take me out to the market I cannot come into I cannot get into the car I'm bound by the spirit of fear and then I said okay we'll deal with that just right there at the car I said in the name of because all of a sudden why she was saying that and she showed me that track the anointing just came on it immediately and immediately I said in the name of Jesus that spirit of timidity and fear get out in Jesus name that woman was free and then when I saw her the following week and she said everything is gone I can go anywhere and I travel anywhere now I'm telling you that the part when it comes upon you it's a very great thing I remember it. I was traveling to America and you know I was uh, traveling through France all of a sudden I was in Paris and uh, this lady she's you know she's not gone to university and she, she's come out she's working in a very great uh, place and then she came and said uh, so and so they did you know she didn't not become a pastor uh, brother Kumui and then I said who are you and then she reminded me of what happened what happened was this uh, she was totally bedridden she was in secondary two at that time they had not gone into ss or gs at just secondary class two at that time and paralyzed invalid just on the bed like that and uh, then i just got to their house just before their evening sunday service and uh, then the mother, I saw the mother, I said, I about your husband, oh, my husband has gone to church. I about, are you not going to church? I said, you know, our daughter has, you know, has started uh, the problem again. And this, this, and this, I said, all right, uh, go and cover up, because she was in the, in the room. And uh, go and cover up so I can go and pray for her. And I went in there, and I, you know, just in the name of Jesus, get up. Because, you know, the, the anointing just comes. And when the anointing comes, it comes with power. And then when I said, get up in Jesus' name, I turned back and went to the room. I told the mother, go and dress up and tell her to come here because she's well now that well, we're not telling them to test themselves or to check on whether they're all right we just knew they were all right and then she dressed up and then she, she she came to the sitting room and i said where would you like to go now she said i've not been in church for a long time evening service is going on in our church today and uh, i like to go to the i said okay let's go and then we got to the church at the end of the service when the father saw her the father was almost fainting because the father thought the girl had died and that it was the goal that she was seeing. So she said, Daddy, no, I'm well, I'm healed. The power of God struck me and everything is taken away. I'm telling you that anointing is coming upon you tonight. I remember those uh, years, it was uh, the, the time when, you know, we went for a scripture union, a scripture union a meeting in Benin. And then the uh, person that uh, the Lord used to organize the meeting became so sick that she couldn't get to the meeting. A lady, uh, because she was the sad traveling secretary of the scripture now at that time in that area of our country. And then I got to the morning meeting about 8 o'clock. Somebody else was to preach. 
they were already singing and i said where's well, uh, sister beatrice and uh, they said you know she's uh, you know so sick and all that i said why how could she be sick she was the one that god used to organize this i said let's go there and then we went to where, where she was staying in the school that they were having the meeting at that time i said sister beatrice what's what's the problem oh she said is this is this in the name of jesus get up and then i told her i said come on now come on to the meeting and she got up she was well immediately that's the kind of anointing we're talking about and when that anointing comes upon you you will never be the same again in jesus name it was around sapele area that was at a particular time and then this was the time that when the anointing was fresh and when the anointing came and they were going about to villages and all that and then we saw this woman and this woman was uh, there you know going around the, the a kind of um, a kind of pot that was upside down and uh, so this uh, woman worshiping an idol and the people went together beatrice and you know the other subscription at that time they said Let, let's witness to this woman so she will not worship either said no don't witness her leave her alone and then we just stayed there while watching her she would you know kneel down uh, before that uh, something before the pot uh, that was turned out but the boy was paralyzed sitting by one side par totally paralyzed eventually after she had done all the running around and all that i said woman what are you doing she said i'm worshiping my god I said, oh, your God, where is your God? She, she pointed to the pot. I said, this is my God. I said, this one. I said, oh, this child, who is uh, the father, the mother? He said, that's my child. I, see, I said, see what your God has done to your child. Your God has made your child paralyzed and you're worshipping the devil. I said, when I pray to my God, my God will raise up your child. And she said, if you pray for my child and the child gets up then i'm going to worship your god and then i'll throw away the idol i said no throw away the idol first then i will pray and everything will be all right then she, she didn't understand she argued with me no pray for my child first let the child get well and then i'll throw away the god i said no because we must not submit to the devil we must not submit to idol worshippers. We will submit to God, but we are to teach them the truth. And so eventually she took that pot. When she took the pot, there was nothing even under it. It was total empty. Empty God. Useless God. So perpetual God. And it, there was nothing there. And she broke it. I said, see your God. See how it is broken. Praise the Lord. And then after she broke that pot, I turned to the boy. I said, boy, in the name of Jesus, get up. I didn't touch him. I didn't pull him up. And that boy got up and all that people around that place you know the other people that were also they said yeah, then we witness to the woman the woman became born again and to the child and the child became born again they said let us go i said no don't go here the father will come and meet us here and so when the father came i said father do you recognize this uh, woman that's my wife i said your wife is not a child of god born again not worshiping my daughter again and then i said do you recognize this child yes that's my child your child is not well i said but you are the only scapegoat here now you know at that time we just spoke to them and whatever word the holy ghost gave us we said it to them we're not measuring the word will they be offended will they not be offended i just said you are the scapegoat the black sheep and the black leg here now everybody is combating the family you are the only child of the devil here no i will not be a child of the devil if you don't want to be a child kneel down he knelt down i led him to the he became born again at the great great revival and that's the kind of anointing we want it will come again in jesus name then we're told in chapter 2 verse 39 chapter 2 verse 39 of acts of the apostles which i've read to you and which i'm reading to you again because this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call it is the anointing that sets you apart you think about joseph the anointing sets him apart and you think about Joshua, the anointing set him apart. You think about Jeroboam, that's Gideon, and the anointing set him apart. You think about Jephthah, and the anointing set him apart. You think about Jehu, and the anointing set him apart. You think about Jeremiah, it was the anointing that set him apart. You think about John the Baptist, it was the anointing that set him apart. And it is now your turn. I said it is now your turn, and the Holy Ghost will come upon you tonight in Jesus' name. Point number three, praying through to the Spirit's anointing on Christian leaders, consecrated leaders. Here the Lord tells us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 and in verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which says he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. It was then when he asked the question, he told them, but he shall receive power. 
after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem and in Judea then to the uttermost part of the earth what were they doing verse 14 these all continue one accord in prayer one accord in prayer they were not asking for any other thing they were asking for the Holy Ghost they were asking for the power the might of the Lord to come upon them that's the only thing they were praying for and it says they continued in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren that's why when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a son from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it sat a field all the house where they were sitting and they appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them upon each of them upon each of them and tonight it will be upon everyone and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with all the tongues as the spirit gave them utterance as the spirit gave them utterance it was the utterance of the spirit that he gave unto them and because it was the spirit that gave it unto them that's why it had authority and power and then by and by and uh, season by season when anything cropped up again they prayed again and the Holy Ghost came upon them mightily afresh again because we're told in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 31 Acts chapter 4 verse 31 and when they prayed the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled again with the Holy Ghost and speak the word of God with boldness that's why you will see as the power came upon them every chapter that they appeared after the power came upon them it was miracle in chapter 2 miracle of conversion in chapter 3 miracle of healing save and gold have I none but what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and the miracle happened as a result of that 4,000 people got converted and in the in the in chapter 5 of Acts of the Apostles is the miracle of judgment and the miracle of mercy together as the shadow of Peter will come upon the people and those that were demon possessed or sick they will be well and then they will be told Totally delivered then you come to chapter 6 and it was the miracle of wisdom as a uh, uh, Stephen they looked at him like this and it was like his face was shining with the, like the face of an angel and they were not able to receive the power with which he spoke and then you come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 and it was the miracle of deliverance and healing as Philip went into the city of Samaria and they were told that unclean spirits crying with loud voice cried I came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with pulses and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in the city you go on and on miracle upon miracle power upon power supernatural power surpassing power that came upon the people and it is now your turn i said it is now your turn because it is the anointing in your life that will break every yoke in your ministry every yoke in your family every yoke among the people the members of the church the anointing is here tonight and it is coming upon you i said the anointing is here tonight and it is coming upon you we're going to rise up with one accord and we're going to raise a voice to the lord and we're going to say lord tonight is a night of anointing tonight is a night of power the, tonight is the night of the appalling of the holy spirit tonight is the anointing of the infilling of the holy ghost tonight is the night when you will do it again do it again lord do it again lord another elijah here another elisha here another john the baptist here and another paul the apostle here another peter and john here and another disciple another ananas here i mean the disciple uh, that prayed for paul the apostle and the scale came out of his eyes and received the holy ghost there's uh, the time and god can make you an essay would what ether and god can make you a real woman of god and a real man of god and the dynamite can come upon your life tonight anointing 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 the anointing that breaks the yoke the anointing that breaks the yoke the anointing that breaks the power that will come upon the people of god and when the power comes upon you tonight you will never be the same it will turn you to another man it will turn you out to another woman another minister another servant of god as the anointing will reach out to you tonight and reach out to your soul and reach out to your spirit you can ask the lord and the anointing the power the spirit will come upon you Come with your empty vessels, not a few. Come with your empty vessels, not a few. You are thirsty. You are thirsty. Oh Lord, pour the power upon me. Pour your spirit upon me. Anoint me with power and, and, and the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. As the people of God are asking the Lord, seeking the face of God, and you are thirsty. And you are hungry. And you are passionate about it. You are desirous about it. 
you are passionate and you are, you are desire to are pursuing oh lord this is what i want i don't want to be a shallow christian i don't want to be a powerless minister i want the power of the lord i want the anointing of the lord i want the unction of the lord and i want you to do it for me tonight pour the pour the spirit upon me and the promises unto you the promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. And to your children, to many, to many that are far up, as many as the Lord shall call. Why don't you call upon the Lord tonight? Be thirsty. Be thirsty. Be thirsty. And we will pour the water, the water of the Spirit, and the oil of the Spirit upon you tonight, because He has given us the promise. This is the night of anointing. And it's a night of power. And the Lord will do it in your life. The Lord will do it in your life. The Lord will do it in your life. If you will open the recesses of your heart, all those places that are closed up, open everything to the Lord. Oh Lord, anoint me tonight. Oh Lord, empower me tonight. Oh Lord, I'll pour, pour out your spirit upon me tonight. Oh Lord, do it for me tonight. And the Lord will do it. And the Lord will do it. And power will come upon you. The anointing will come upon you. Let him do it for you. Let him do it for you. Let him do it for you. Let him do it. The promise is something that your children to many as the many that are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. You have been saved. You have been sanctified. You have been separated. You have been selected. And you have been appointed. You have been anointed for the work. Then tell the Lord the anointing for service. The anointing that will break the yoke. The anointing that will qualify me for the ministry. That I will do what you want me to do. Anointing that will come with revelation. Anointing that will come with the gifts of the Spirit. Anointing anointing that will come with power in the Holy Ghost, anointing that will come with insight, inspiration, anointing that will come and then I will move like another man and then I will preach like another man and then I will pray like another man and then I will counsel like another man and then I will move like another man. The anointing of the Lord upon your life, the anointing of the Lord upon your life. Let the Lord do it, let the Lord do it because the Lord wants to glorify himself in your life. He wants to glorify himself in your life and he's saying this this is your night, your night of anointing, and your night of power, and your night of the Holy Ghost. Don't you want a greater ministry, a higher ministry, a more successful ministry, a more profitable ministry, a healing ministry, a deliverance ministry, an effective ministry, a successful ministry, a kind of ministry that will deliver the oppressed and all the afflicted people. The Lord will give you the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost to deliver them and to set them free. A kind of anointing that will break all the yokes in their lives. And will break all the fetters in their lives anointing anointing the anointing of the holy ghost tonight is that night tonight is that night tonight is that night when they were all with one accord in one place suddenly the spirit of god came upon them and they were all filled with the holy ghost and then clothing tongues like a sofa sat upon each of them and they began to speak with other tongues and the spirit gave them utterance utterance the utterance of the holy ghost the power of the holy ghost the dynamite of the holy ghost in your heart in your life let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. The Lord will do it in your life. The Lord will do it in your life. The Lord will do it in your life. Because the promise is unto you and to your children and to your seed and to your members and to everyone in the church. As many as the Lord our God shall call. And a new anointing for healing. A new anointing for deliverance. A new anointing for dominion. A new anointing for power. A new anointing for revelation. A new anointing for interpretation of scripture. A new anointing for proclamation of scripture. A new anointing for prophetic preaching a new anointing for powerful preaching a new anointing for dominion a new anointing for a great ministry a new anointing for village evangelism a new anointing for city evangelism a new anointing to break the hard hearts a new anointing to melt the hard hearts a new anointing that when you pray and when you preach and when you proclaim the word of god when you witness when you win souls their hearts will be drawn unto the lord the lord will touch their heart and your word will not fall to the ground a new anointing you will run your will not be weary and you will walk and you will not fail. the lord will renew you in the inner man when he pours out the spirit upon you it will be like pouring cold water upon thirsty dry land let it come let it come let the dew of heaven fall upon me let the dew of heaven fall upon me let it come let it come let it come it will come upon you it will come upon you it is a power the power for service the, the power for exploits and the power to do great mighty things in these days in which we are living and the power to be able to crush all those works of the devil cancel destroy all those works of the devil in the power to be able to silence all the false prophets and the power to be able to help the people in need in your location in your church anywhere you are the power 
the power, the Pentecostal power. It is still the same today. No matter what they say, the power, that Pentecostal power, it is still the same today. Let that power come upon you. Let that power come upon you. Let that power come upon you. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, this is what I need. I will not leave you except you baptize me tonight. You baptize me afresh. You baptize me anew. You pour it upon me anew. I want something powerful. I want something dynamic. I want something mighty. I want something that will shake every shakeable out of my ministry. Every shakeable out of my family will shake weakness away. I will shake infirmity away. I will shake all those indignities away. Oh Lord, pour your power, the Holy Ghost upon me tonight. Let the Lord do it. The anointing that God gives to consecrated leaders. The anointing that God gives to commissioned leaders. The anointing that God gives to the people he has appointed. It is for you. It is for you. If it, it is for you, ask, it shall be given you. And seek, and ye shall find. Nor can it shall be open unto you. What if your child asks you egg, will you give him a stone? What if he asks you a fish, will you give him a serpent? If he been evil not to give good gifts to your children, how much more? How much more? How much more readily? How much more easily? How much more lovingly? How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Give the Holy Ghost to them to ask him. When he gives that Holy Ghost to you, and when he pours that Holy Ghost upon you, it will be recognized. The power will be recognized. The anointing will be recognized. Pharaoh recognized the anointing on Joseph. The Canaanites recognized the anointing on Joshua. And the people of the Midianites, they recognized the anointing on Jeroboam. And then the enemies of the people of Israel, they recognized the anointing on Jephthah. And then the people in, in Samaria and Jerusalem, Judah, they recognized the anointing on Jeremiah. And Herod recognized the anointing on John the Baptist. Let that anointing come upon you. The anointing of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. And as that anointing comes upon you, you'll never be like you were. And you'll never be as weak as you were. Your body will be strong. Your mind will be strong. Your spirit will be strong. Your inner man will be strong. And then you will walk the walk of the Lord. You will not be tired. The power of the Lord will be moving you like the power of the Lord moved something in the camp. And the power will come upon him. And whatever came his way at that time, he carried everything. He carried everything away and all the hindrances were taken out of the way let that power come upon you too let that power come upon you too the power of the holy ghost the anointing of the holy ghost the outpouring of the holy ghost bring your vessels empty vessels not a few empty vessels not a few how large is your desire how great is your desire how great is your passion what do you want to achieve in ministry what do you want to do in ministry how do you want to be effective in ministry how productive do you want to be in ministry why don't you then tell the lord oh lord i'm not satisfied with what, I, what I've got. I'm not pleased with what I've got. I want to do more. 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 I want to go further. I want to go further. In my preaching, I want to be more effective. In my leadership, I want to be more effective. I want anointing on my leadership. I want power on my leadership. And I want to succeed and fulfill my ministry. Oh Lord, this is my day. This is my time to be able to confront Jezebel and confront Ahab and confront all all those hundreds of prophets of Baal and then to bring the fire down to bring the fire down and to raise the dead and then to glorify your name oh lord this is my day Elijah at this day this is my day Elisha at this day this is my day Daniel at this day in Babylon this is my day John the Baptist at this day in Jerusalem this is my day Paul the apostle at this day in the gentle world this is my day and this is my time for the anointing upon me Pour the anointing upon me. Pour the anointing upon me. Lord, I want the anointing. Lord, I need the anointing. Dig deep into my heart. If there is any hindrance there, root it out. Pull it down. Break it down. And then you build your edifice in my heart. And you fill my temple with, your, with the Holy Ghost. And fill my temple with the anointing, the unction, the oil of power. Fill my heart, O oh Lord. Fill my heart, O oh Lord. Fill my heart, O oh Lord. Let the anointing come upon me tonight. Let the anointing come upon me that from tonight I'll never be the same again. My vision will change. My attitude will change. My disposition will change. My ministry will change. And my stairs will even change. My strength will be increased. Let the power come upon me, Lord. 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 It's okay. 
it will come because God is a faithful God. All his promises are yes and amen. And the promise of the Holy Ghost, that's yes and amen. The promise of power, that is yes and amen. The promise of the new anointing, that is yea and amen. And it must come. And Jesus said, I'll go to the Father. I will not leave you comfortless. You will be not be an orphan. I will pray the Father and he will give the Holy Ghost unto you. He will give the Holy Ghost unto you. He will give the Holy Ghost unto you. Because we'll ask him and he'll give you the spirit of truth. And when that spirit of truth has come, he'll guide you into all truth. He'll guide you into all truth. He'll not speak of himself, but he'll speak of me and magnify me. And when Jesus Christ is magnified in your ministry, souls are going to be saved. Believers are going to be sanctified. Sanctified people are going to be filled and energized and empowered with the Holy Ghost. The anointing will pass from you unto them. And then the whole church of a church will power. It will be like electricity, dynamite from heaven. And the dynamo of heaven will be upon your heart, will be upon your life, and will be upon your ministry. And then it will be a kind of dynamic ministry, an effective ministry, a, a soul converting ministry, and a disciple rearing, disciple reproducing ministry. A ministry that is moving forward, a ministry that is healing the sick, a ministry that is crushing the power of the enemy in your locality, in your village, in your, in your town, anywhere you are there will be that power will move in your heart and God will make you another possessor, partaker of the spirit of might and the spirit of power it's coming on you it's coming on you it's coming on you it's coming on you tonight is that night tonight is that night the night of power the night of freshness the night of anointing the night of the Holy Ghost the night when great mighty things will take place a great night a great night the night of your feeling of the holy ghost the night of the power of the holy ghost let it come let it come let it come let it come let the power of the lord come upon you tonight let it come the power and the might of the lord the power and the might of the lord let it come it's available for you tonight available for you tonight and thank him for sending the Holy Ghost power. Praise him for sending the Holy Ghost power. Praise him for sending the Holy Ghost power. How thirsty are you? How desirous are you? How hungry are you? How passionate are you? How much are you willing to lay upon the altar until the supernatural power of the Lord will come upon your life? Almighty God, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We are gathered here with one accord, just for one thing, that the Holy Ghost will come upon everybody in this auditorium tonight, in Jesus' name. That anointing and that power, and that infilling that you give to your own people, that will move us in the camp of the Lord, and that will shake every timidity and fear and weakness and failure away from us. Oh Lord, from heaven, open the windows of heaven, and pour the power down tonight, in Jesus' name. Every captive, you set them free tonight. All the yokes, you break all the yokes tonight. Everything that is inhibiting anyone. Anything that is holding anyone down. Anything that is shutting anybody's mouth. And then they are not free in the spirit. Oh Lord, I pray. All that bondage, take it away in Jesus' name. I pray now for every minister here. I pray now for every servant of God here. I pray now for every Esther and every Ruth here. I pray for every woman leader here. And I pray for the youth leaders here, for the children church leaders here, for the campus leaders here, for the language church leaders here, for all our pastors and all our coordinators, all our overseer. Lord, I pray a greater power. Lord, I pray a greater anointing. Lord, I pray that a greater unction will come upon everybody in Jesus' name anointing in their soul, anointing in their spirit, anointing upon their ministry. Oh Lord, confirm it in Jesus' name. I pray right now that the power will so come and move everyone that they will never be the same again in Jesus' name. The spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of, of knowledge and the spirit of discernment and the gift of faith and the gift of working miracles and the gift of healing and prophecy and speaking in tongues and in Interpretation and diverse gifts and oppression of the Holy Ghost, oh Lord, grant unto your people tonight in Jesus' name. 
Now the Lord is telling you that you have got the answer. You have got the answer. Now the Lord is saying, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Oh Lord, feel your people now. Feel your people now. Feel your people now. Feel your people now. Lord, make them, make them, make them. Lord, vessels of power and vessels of honor and vessels of dynamite even from now on confirm it right now in their lives in the name of jesus open your mouth the lord is feeling you now the lord is feeling you now and let him feel you to overflowing 